Take a good, close look at any of these passages about good shepherds and their sheep, and you find them dripping with blood, covered in darkness, surrounded by enemies, which makes me wonder, why are they our favorites? If I had to guess, I would guess that it is because this is how we experience life. It is beautiful and sunlit in so many ways, but it is also dark and full of danger. Crossing Monument Avenue on a sunny Sunday afternoon, you look both ways because you don't want to be struck down by a car and killed. In my own home, in a part of the city that is virtually crime-free with good neighbors on both sides, I still activate the security system when I come home at night because someone might break in and steal or worse, you never know. When my children are on the road or out on the town, I often ask them to give me a call when they have arrived safely at their destination just to let me know if they are with friends enjoying themselves so that I won't worry. I can't help myself. I know the world is both lovely and sunlit and also dark and dangerous. Christians are sometimes accused of being Pollyannish, if that's a word, of thinking that because they love Jesus and Jesus loves them, everything will be just fine. Don't worry. Be happy. But these passages of Scripture don't suffer from any such delusions. David, the one who wrote Psalm 23, had been a shepherd himself. Do you remember what he said to King Saul just before he went out to fight the giant Goliath? He said, your servant used to watch over his father's flock. And when a lion or bear came and snatched a lamb from the fold, I would chase after it and club it and kill it. And if it turned on me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down. Darkness. Danger. Later, when King Saul turned against him and began to chase David all over the Judean wilderness, he remembered his own experience as a shepherd remembered how he had led his flock beside still waters and bedded them down in green pastures. He thought about how God was watching over him, keeping him safe in those circumstances. The Lord is my shepherd, he said. It's a dark world. It's full of danger. You don't think Jesus knew that when he talked about being the good shepherd with those enemies of his surrounding him, looking for an opportunity to catch him, to kill him? In the verse that follows our gospel reading for today, they take up stones to put him to death. And in the book of Revelation, that beautiful text doesn't speak of a miraculous rapture in which all the Christians are saved from persecution, as some people imagine. It talks about this great multitude of people, more than anyone can count, from every tribe and tongue on the face of the earth, these people who have gone through the great tribulation, who have suffered for their faith. They're standing there before the throne of God because they have died for their faith in Christ. But their robes are white. They've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. There is nothing Pollyannish about these passages. They see the world as it really is, but they also see God as God really is. We don't love these passages because they present us with a picture of the perfect life. We love them because they present us with a picture of life as it is, filled with dark shadows and deep valleys and all the time, everywhere, the comforting presence of God. On the Sunday after September 11th, 2001, I climbed the steps of the pulpit at Washington's First Baptist Church. I spoke to that congregation about fear, about what had happened in our own city. I said, you know, terrorism seeks to terrify 
It tries to bring down a whole nation by making people so afraid that they can no longer function. I said, let us not give the terrorist that satisfaction. Let us refuse to be afraid. And I took as my text this psalm, Psalm 23, and said, here we have the antidote to fear, which is the presence of God. When I visit the hospitals, I often say to people, you know, the Bible doesn't promise us that we will never endure suffering. It doesn't promise us that we will never go through hardship. It only promises us that no matter what we go through, God will go through it with us. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, we don't have to be afraid. God is with us. And that's a comfort. That's a real comfort comfort. When Jennifer comes back around to your table, you've gone a little overboard. Now there are bombs exploding in the background and fighter planes swooping low, strafing the flock. The sheep are running everywhere. Soldiers are advancing on foot. Someone has waged all-out war against these sheep. Jennifer comes by your table and says, well, okay. I think you've begun to get the picture. You're just missing one thing. And then she hands you something she has been carrying around the room and giving to everyone else. It's a paper cutout of a shepherd. A shepherd who looks brave and strong and able. You turn it over, squirt out some Elmer's glue on the back, smear it with your finger. And then you stick that shepherd right down in the middle of your picture and take a look. There is that shepherd standing there in the midst of his flock, surrounded by danger on every side. And yet, there is that shepherd. And somehow, somehow, that changes everything. Shall we pray? Good shepherd, watch over your flock. We pray that you would keep us safe from every danger, every difficulty. But we ask that whatever happens, you would be with us. That your presence would be a comfort to us and a source of strength. That we would know that if you are with us, there is nothing that can destroy us. Lord Jesus, walk with us when we walk through dark valleys. Keep us on the paths of righteousness. Bring us into your everlasting home. For we ask it in the name of the Good Shepherd. Amen.